Today I'm going to show you how to fix a broken air compressor, whether it doesn't want to build pressure or doesn't want to start at all. And stick around to the end if you want to see some cool add-ons that will make your compressor last longer and easier to operate. If you're new to the channel, then make sure to hit that subscribe button. I will leave a link for all the parts in the description and let's get started. This is an air compressor which I got from a friend of mine. Now the problem with this compressor is that when you try to start it up, it will sometimes hesitate, causing the circuit breaker to pop. Now if we have a closer look by removing the plastic, which can only be done through unbolting the compressor, we can see how there is no apparent damage to neither the actual compressor nor the AC motor. Now the most likely reason for AC motors not spinning is usually the capacitor. Over time, capacitors lose their capacitance, which eventually prevents them from doing their job. If I connect the multimeter to the capacitor, we can see that it reads 40 microfarads. And when reading its label, we can clearly see that it's supposed to be between 53 and 64 microfarads. So, I looked around my workshop and eventually found some capacitors, which are used for central ACs. However, the closest capacitor to 53 microfarads I could find was 45 microfarads. Now before testing to see if it works, I do have to mention that you do have to spin it manually to make sure that it pumps air. In this case it does. But if yours doesn't and it is not seized, I would highly recommend checking on YouTube to see how to replace the reed valves. Anyways, I remounted the compressor for safety and let's see if it'll run. Nice. Okay, so we see that it works, but the question is, can it actually build pressure? To find that out, I'll reconnect the copper pipe so the air should be pushed into the tank. And now we can switch it on once again. I don't recommend letting air compressors run without its fan shroud, which is the part that directs the fan air to cool down the compressor. But for this demonstration, I won't let it run for too long to make sure that it doesn't overheat. If we look at the gauges, we can witness the pressure slowly rising. It is also way quieter than before since the air isn't leaking anymore. Or is it? When taking some shots with my camera around the compressor, I noticed a certain part leaking a lot of air. So you might be wondering, why don't I just cap it? Well, let's find out. I'll use some yellow Teflon tape since it is designed for gas fittings and air is technically a gas. As you can see, the compressor is struggling to start up, not again. This is because this kind of motor does not have a lot of starting torque. So to solve that, this compressor had installed a special fitting called a cold start valve. Which as its name suggests, it stays open on startup, letting the motor run without a load, and then closes at a certain pressure, in this case 1.7 bar or about 25 psi. After about a second, the compressor already reached a sustainable RPM and seals itself shut, allowing the compressor to efficiently fill itself up without any leaks. I did end up doing some research to find out exactly what capacitor this needs. And apparently, for a 2 horsepower, 120 volt single phase AC induction motor powering an air compressor, it is required to use a capacitor rated between 30 and 50 microfarads. So with a quick search on Amazon, I found a capacitor rated at 40 microfarads and 250 volts AC. Once it arrived, I gotta say it was packaged quite well. But most importantly, when measuring its capacitance, I'm getting exactly 40 microfarads. Nice. I made sure that it comes with a built-in mounting bolt, so it doesn't just rattle around. 
Now even though it can run off a larger capacitor, it is not the best idea for the long run, since having a smaller capacitor kind of acts like a soft start, which reduces stress on the moving parts, ultimately making it last longer. And as expected, it works like a charm. Now since you've already seen me take this thing apart, I won't waste your time and... There we have it. Hmm... Something ain't right. Nothing a little spray paint can't fix. I'm not an expert, but I think it looks much better. Now onto the first upgrade. These pressure gauges are quite old, therefore are not that accurate anymore. This gauge is showing 20 psi, while the compressor is at 0 psi. Most compressors come with regular dry pressure gauges, but I went ahead and spent the extra 2 bucks to get the liquid filled ones. These gauges don't only last longer and keep the needle steady while the compressor is running, but they also never fog up from condensation since there is virtually no air behind the glass. 4 wraps should be just enough for yellow teflon tape. As we can see, while the compressor is building pressure, the needle is rising slowly and isn't jumping all over the place like it used to, which will ultimately make it last longer. For the second pressure gauge, I gotta say that the location where it was mounted is kind of stupid and it's very hard to read the pressure. So the solution is to install a 45 degree adapter which will allow me to view the pressure more easily. And as we can see, I can now read the pressure without uncomfortably bending over. I can also adjust the pressure regulator and watch the needle move fast and smoothly. To make sure the compressor lasts as long as it can, I ordered a new air intake filter for a few bucks. I did this because the original filter was entirely made out of plastic and seems to be repaired with hot glue, while the new one is made out of steel, comes with another filter housing and two extra replacement media. All this will allow me to forget about buying new media for the next few years since these filters only have to be replaced once a year. I ended up having to put together some plumbing for this because the filter does not fit. And just like that, the filter can easily be threaded in place. And you know what? I think it's actually now easier to access, which will give me a bigger chance of replacing it on time. If you've watched my previous video, then you might have noticed that I already own an air compressor. So why do I need this one, you might ask? Well, if you're familiar with these oil-free pancake compressors, you might have noticed that they are noticeably louder than these oiled compressors. Here is a comparison. Oil-free compressor versus oiled compressor. As you can clearly hear, there is definitely a difference. So I can now place it where the old compressor used to be. Now I don't know about you, but sometimes when attempting to hook up the compressor, the quick connect fights back since it is always pressurized with air. So the solution is to install one of these quarter inch valves which should solve the problem. Whoops, forgot to close the pressure regulator. Now we can thread back in the quick connect, turn back on the regulator, and then reinstall the quick connect and splitter. Now when I try to plug in a hose, it doesn't fight back. And we can without interruptions use whatever tool we want. If you like this video, then make sure to hit that subscribe button and consider supporting me through Patreon where you can have early access to my new videos. And I will see you guys in the next video.